I got a new pet parrot. But then I heard it speak, and now I'm afraid of what it might make me do. Part 2. Submitted by Travis Liebert. After staring at the parrot for what felt like an eternity as it told me to kill my loved ones in my mother's voice, I blinked and was suddenly shaken from whatever had possessed me. I stood up and ran my hands through my hair, trying to block out the voice as the bird continued its insistence. Stop, I said, barely containing a shout as I whirled to face the parrot. Suddenly its voice, or I suppose my mother's voice, stopped, and it cocked its head. There was something different about the parrot's eyes. I can't explain it, but it somehow looked angry. It was just a bird, but I felt small beneath Crimson's gaze. Eric, it said once again in my mother's voice. I didn't respond, and instead simply stared at it with a mixture of fear and revulsion. Do you want to know how I felt when I got my cancer diagnosis? The bird asked. No, I whispered feeling sick. Stop this. I don't know what you are, but please just stop. However, the bird didn't stop. When they told me that I had three months to live, I was scared at first. After all, no one wants to die. I felt my hands begin to shake as the bird spoke. How could it know about my mom's cancer diagnoses? How did it mimic her voice so perfectly? Every slight intonation was exact, every choice of words precisely how she would have said it. But then I noticed something interesting. My mother's voice continued. Beneath the fear and surprise of my diagnosis, there was elation. I was happy to die because then I could finally be rid of you. My blood ran cold at those words. I was glad that I only had to deal with you for three more months. You were always so fucking stupid, incapable of doing even the simplest thing. Her voice became poisonous as she spit the words. It was a relief knowing I wouldn't have to watch you grow up and become a failure. You were 16 at the time and I already knew you would do nothing with your life. At least the cancer would prevent me from having to witness your pitiful attempts to prove you're worth something. I strode toward the bird, rage fueling every step, fully intent on killing the fucking thing. I didn't want to hear anything else it had to say. You've never been good at anything, the bird continued as I made my way toward it. You've always been a fucking coward. I opened the cage and was reaching to take the bird by its throat when it spoke again. Don't you lay your fucking hands on me, boy. My hand froze inches from the bird as it spoke in my father's voice this time. It was exactly as I remembered it, his slight country accent always filled with barely contained rage. I ought to knock you upside the head, you worthless sack of shit, it continued, now speaking as my father. No matter how many times I beat your ass, you never seem to learn your lesson, do you? S stop. I felt like I couldn't breathe. If I'd been scared before, then I was terrified now. My father had left when I was 12. And, while it was difficult growing up without a dad, I'd considered it good riddance. That mean bastard always hated me, and he took every opportunity to show it, whether it was with his words or with his fists. Don't you talk back to me. The bird hopped from its perch so that it was sitting at the entrance of the cage. I bet you still wonder what happened to me after I left. No, I lied, hoping the bird would just stop. I didn't want to hear any more. Don't lie to me. Crimson almost seemed to grin. I left and never looked back. I even started a new family and had a new son. The bird took another hop forward, seeming to stare me down as it spoke. And you know what? I never laid a finger on him. Unlike you, he didn't need it. He wasn't a worthless sack of shit all the time. Unlike you, I actually loved him. I let out a cry of rage and pain, suddenly reaching forward and taking the bird by the throat. I needed the voices to stop. It was all too much. With a quick jerking motion. I heard bone snap, and the bird finally stopped speaking. My hands were shaking as I held the lifeless parrot. Then, I began to laugh, a wild maniacal sound that teetered on the edge of crying. I'd won. The thing had finally stopped. Once I'd finally recovered and gained my bearings, I took the parrot outside and threw its body in a wooded area behind my apartment. There were plenty of stray cats roaming the neighborhood, and I figured that one of them would eat it eventually. I returned inside and sat on the couch thinking about everything the bird had said. Surely, it wasn't true. Was it? It had been right about Hannah and Jake, so what if it was right about my mother and father? I felt a chill run down my spine at the thought and tried to forget all about it. But still, the parrot's words haunted me. Had she actually been relieved to die? Was I really such a failure that dying was better than trying to be my mother? Then my thoughts shifted to what it had said about my dad, about how he had started a new family and been a good father. Was the bird telling the truth? Was it my fault that he had always been such a mean bastard? 
Those questions swirled around my mind for the remainder of the day. No matter how hard I tried, I couldn't stop them. They simply sat there, like enormous weights that slowed my thinking and made it impossible to focus on anything else. After laying in silence for much of the evening, I finally fell asleep. I woke up several hours later to a strange rustling sound in my room. I opened my eyes only to see a dark silhouette perched on my nightstand. I know. Thank <laughs> you.